It's uh, time for Off the Press. It's a segment where we uh, quickly go through as many of the stories making the headlines across the country. Uh, this morning we will be speaking as we are now being joined by uh, Libra Soshoma. He will be, of course, uh, sharing his thoughts on these uh, stories um, all through uh, the period when Off the Press runs. Welcome and thanks for joining us, sir. My pleasure. All right, we'll start with the Punch newspaper. The big one on the front page is... Buhari submits PIB to National Assembly, scraps NNPC, PPPRA in New Bill. Uh, there are two writers to that story. Proposed law creates Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited to replace NNPC. Finance petroleum ministers to determine assets, liabilities to be inherited by new firm. Uh, before I go ahead and pick on any other headline, let's replace NMPC will be replaced by what's the difference in uh, do you think yeah um, uh, you know a lot of people had clamor for um, the restructuring of NNPC unbundling if you want to use the word unbundling of NMPC and to make it more viable um, in terms of profit making uh, making it a limited liability company means um, um, that uh, it will be run, you know, to be profit oriented and not the way it is being run now, like, um, you know, where government still has to, you know, budget money, grant subvention to NMPC, despite, you know, running the entire gamut of um, the oil industry. But uh, the only issue would be that, you know, you separate the regulat regulatory body of NMPC from the um, uh, investment entity of the NMPC, just like you have Petronas, Petrobras. You know, these are entities that, you know, people can even subscribe to their shareholding. And, you know, so I, I think that's um, the basic difference here. Uh, and it's something that a lot of people had clamored for, that um, there's need for, for us to, you know, um, unbundle the NMPC majorly. And then you can also talk about um, um, deregulation and removal of subsidy while still retaining, you know, the petroleum pricing and regulatory, you know, body. And then I, another area that I also need them to look at is, you, you know, you can't have um, deregulation and still keep, uh, uh, you still have uh, the petroleum equalization fund. These are bodies that need to go if truly you are unbonding an NPC. All right, let's see other headlines uh, still on the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, power generation hits uh, 4.4,312 4, megawatts. 16 plants record increase. That's uh, another one I would have said. Four points. That means we're home free if we have four <laughs> points. So it's four. It's four thousand three hundred and twelve megawatts. Uh, we also have uh, present cracks may lead to Nigeria's breakup. That's the vice president of Shibanjo uh, warning. Warning there. Uh, PDP 2019 presidential review panel consults OBJ IBB Mark. Uncertainty over strike as Labour FD hold marathon meeting. At least we know that there's a suspension for two weeks as it stands. Um, still on the front page of the Punch newspaper, just underneath are those photographs. Uh, the attack on uh, Governor Zulum is captured there. Uh, this way, again, Boko Haram attacks Zulum's convoy, soldier injured. Uh, police arrest Ogun cultists during morning of dead colleague. And then Amechi Wike exchange words at Supreme Court Justice Burial. Uh, those are some of the headlines on the Punch newspaper. Three Lagos cops returning from Edo election die in crash. Uh, may they rest in peace. Uh, over to you now, uh, Mr. Shema. Um, first and foremost, uh, please permit me to start with the, pres the vice president's statement that um, um, the current cracks. Um, cracks. Um, it is um, 
audible to the deaf and visible to the blind, that we have never been this divided in Nigeria. Even under Abacha, we are not this divided. And uh, almost every region is singing discordant tunes. And the earlier the government realized that, look, you know, we are gradually moving the wars towards the wars of precipice. And you know, any little thing can boil over, the better for us as a nation. And what does it take to mend fences? When P P Professor Yomi Oshibanjo acted as the president, if you remember then there were tension, the IPOB issues, and what did he do? He just took a trip around these places and shook hands across you know, regions. And the tension just similarly died down. What are people asking for? Equality. Treat us the same way you treat your people. If indeed you see your people as different, you know, equality and what is good for the goose should be good for the gander. That's basically what people are asking for. And then this attitude of, you know, believing that one section of the country, everybody must, all your appoint, uh, 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 government app appointees must come from one section of the country also, is further fanning that embers. And this idea of, you know, religion also, and insecurity. Insecurity in the Northeast. But where, where, where do they begin? I mean, we have a multiplicity of No, the, issues first, to the first step should be, they, the, I told you the vice president started. Yeah. The first step should be, you know, give everybody a sense of belonging to the entity. Professor, um, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, in his lifetime, said, when two incompatible meets, they can coexist perfectly if only they agree to agree on certain issues and agree to disagree on others. You must not hold a conference for people to agree to agree. Simple, just you know, shake hands across regions. Give them a sense of belonging. By the time you begin from that point of view, and then you would have you know, created a platform for people to air their grievances to you. The ones you can address, they are low-hanging fruits that you can address now. Then the subsequent one, you know, this idea of, oh, yes, this government is, you know, rehabilitating uh, the, or reconstructing no, 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 the not second to, Niger not to, not Bridge. Not to interrupt you, yeah. but we, we've had several meetings when it comes to... I'm not talking about meetings. Um, we have the CONFAB report. Do we have to start all over again? That's Aren't there not recommendations? The issue. You can have as many reports as you want in Nigeria. Implementation is key. If they are not implemented, they will end up as paper tiger in the dustbin of history. And, and so what you need to do, like I said, what did Oshibanjo do? He went, we, Rivers is known as the enemy territory. Oshibanjo was in Rivers with Wiki. And they share banters. And so if you see these two people who ordinarily, you know, you perceive as enemies atop there. You see them sharing banters. The tendency for you to calm down will be there. Your Shibanjo walked on the street of Yenagua and people were, oh, even when we had a president from this place, we didn't see him this close. He went to Oweri. You know, so these are places where people are feeling, you know, look, this, we do not belong here to your tent, O Israel. I, I once said, what does it take for the federal government to engage Nam Kanu and say, you know what? Ordinarily would, would have ignored you, but with the kind of teeming youth that are following you, yeah. there's need to engage you constructively. But they didn't do that, they missed that opportunity. With the kind of, you, you know, exchange you would have with your hands in Digbo, the Arewa Youth um, or the Arewa Consultative Forum, the Odu, Oduduwa. When you do all of these things, it's simple. You hear from them. You, know how you need to also restructure your mindset as the leader of those that voted for you and those that didn't vote for you. Uh, so, so that we don't, um, you know, um, dwell on, on that on, uh, uh, too, much. too yeah. much. Then you go to the Northeast. This is the second attack on the convoy of Governor Zulum. And he's the only governor, you know, though in APC, he's the only governor that is making a difference, you know, in that region. So if the governor is so unsafe, in spite of the retinue of policemen around him, you can imagine what the ordinary man will be going through in that region. So insecurity is not just in the south, it is prevalent in the north. Government, what is government doing about this situation? Every day you hear that Boko Haram has been defeated, um, Boko Haram has been technically defeated, or that um, uh, there is tactical maneuvering. If the governor, a governor is not safe, it's just like a DPO is kidnapped in the south, south, south. And then, you know, an ordinary person is kidnapped. Who do you report to when the DPO himself have been kidnapped? Yeah. So, right. and then you return to the state of our roads. 
over the weekend I talked about Badagri, the road mm -hmm. between uh, Kokomaiko to Badagri is not, somebody described it as not Okadarebo. The Lagos State Government has waterways that you can open up, but nobody is discussing all of this. Look at the un unavoidable death of the three policemen from Benin on their way back That's for a weird. national assignment. And I can tell you, immediately after this, nobody will discuss the, the welfare of their, cho the, their children or, All right. or their spouses, and it ends there. All right. Let's uh, move to the nation newspapers. Uh, the lead story there already talking about the uh, suspended strike and the government uh, shifting grounds in a bid to stop labor strike. It also says how Nigeria can avoid breakup by, once again, the vice president, um, Yemi Oshimbajo. Um, also, CBN's rate caught uh, triggers rush for equity. The Naira may drop as Forex reserves drop by $47.3 million. A few other stories on the nation this morning. Electricity tariff for renegotiation. NLC, TUC, uh, rethink industrial action. And Zulum's convoy. Army uh, recounts how soldiers and policemen were killed. Um, a few others. Uh, kingmakers seek restraint over anti-Oluo calls. And also Boko Haram fighters surrender. That's also one of the stories on the nation newspapers this morning. A union's uh, tariff increase is disobedience to court order. Airline operators shot, uh, shun strike plan. And also labor puts members on alert. Students also get set for as um, a TUC tackles head of service. It's all centered around the uh, strike. Um, so let, let's quickly go to you now. Um, I, I, I would like you to speak, um, you know, start with talking about Nigerians, the citizens, um, the expectations for this Monday morning, their, their trust in the NLC. Now, please, Where do you uh, see all of this going? Please how permit me to start from two fifty million votes. Give give course, Lekong, given to Lekong. Bibi, Niger yes. victory and the number of the total number of votes cast in Nigeria in the, two, the last, election. In, the last, last election. in the last election if you just oppose that with the number of vote cast here then you know that there is a big problem here in the in a do state election less less a, 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 a state with a population of about 5 million the total number of people that elected the governor less than six six hundred thousand actual num actual voters about 2.2 million you know so you now begin to question yourself what is it that we are not doing well yeah. you know what is it that we should do to en en ensure that people Our participate more in, electoral process. in the ele electoral process until we get that right we will not get the issue of the citizenship that you're talking about because the citizens don't even see themselves as stakeholders in the entity called nigeria mind you i use the word entity not a country and, and so, and that's why, you know, there's a, a, a divorce between the, the rule and the rulers. And um, people will ask you which one consign me with labor. Because even the labor that we're talking about now, when labor goes on strike, I, I once asked this question, when they go to negotiate with governments, they are negotiating on behalf of they are workers, not the market woman, because that woman is not represented on that table. How about independent ones like us? We are not represented on that table. During the Occupy Lagos and Occupy Nigeria protests, they went to discuss with government who was representing the people Wouldn't it be in those fair places. to say that, I mean, is, is it possible to represent every single no, Nigeria? No, what I'm saying, wouldn't what it, I'm saying wouldn't is... Wouldn't it be that the issues that are being addressed, you know, one thing that affects affect one affects the other? And but at the end of the day, we have consistently followed that trajectory and we had all the issues that have been addressed had never, never, not for once, you know, been in favor of the Nigerian people. And, and so even that, that mass action in 2012, was actually led by civil societies and the Nigerian people. But at the end of the day, when those that were called to negotiate were labor, and when they negotiated without having recourse back to the people that saw the Congress yeah. that sent them, they, 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 they arrived at a compromise that still wasn't favorable to the people. And so, and that's why there's that, over, over the years, when you see these things happen recurrently, 
Over the years, when you now say, oh, look, join me. We want to go on a mass protest. You're like, the one you did last time, how did it affect? Why did it favor me? This was what I wanted. And when you now got there to negotiate, did you get back to me? But at least, I you mean, so, um, let, let, let's look at the fact when that... When Labour negotiates, have do you have representative of the civil society in those places? Even the civil society also, over time, had at some point, you know, also, um, um, that trust reposing them by, by the people, the mass followership... Also, they've lost that with the last, you know, this present government. With the 2015 election, so are, are you, after the election, are, they are, you, are you completely uh, disregarding the efforts of the TUC, the NLC, and other um, unions as per this particular situation? Uh, this, they held their ground. They are association. And for now, wait, they, 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 let, let okay. me land. They held their ground. And for some reason, they have two weeks to allow for a conversation to happen and two weeks reprieve for Nigerians and as it were. Tariff. I mean, isn't that something we should say, okay, they seem to be moving are you towards not, the right direction. Are you not, I read this, this script yesterday, this script that you're talking about, I played it for somebody yesterday. And I said, was, he called me to say, oh, are you sure that, for somebody to be asking me if I'm even sure that labor will still go on this strike. The question was, I told him, I said, well, go back in time. Just, you know, go back, refresh your memory on what had happened before now. When they call, uh, when they call strike, the, at the, a day or two, or the night before, suddenly government will wake up, and then you go for negotiations, and then after labor will come at about 3 a.m. and tell you, this was my statement to somebody yesterday, and tell you it has been suspended to uh, 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 um, enhance further negotiations, and then the matter will would have, um, will fizzle out gradually until another one will happen. And then we'll suddenly realize, well, let's see, we have coped with this, so we really can't bother ourselves again any, any longer. Labor didn't call strike yesterday. So why was the negotiations not kick-started before now? So that all of those two weeks before now would have been enough since 1st of September. They've been having meetings, sir. So why is it that these meetings all of a sudden, the night before you decide, okay, like, we need further two weeks to negotiate. You know, because the people that you have, you know, prepared to, to embark on this, you know, strike, sit at home. You, before, where you now decided that you were going to, you know, go for further negotiations with government. Didn't you have that at the back of your mind before that this might happen? Before you now say, look, you know, we're going headlong. Even as at yesterday by 6 p.m., you know, there were press releases that is a fundamental right and they were still going ahead with it where negotiations not there. So these are issues that breach trusts and confidence in the people. So that's why the people, every day, you see the people, you know, becoming frustrated with all of this. Just, what, what, what just would be go, your ideal go reaction on your, go from on the labor your, unions now? Because you seem to have set a precedence that over time, this is the way that they behave. Yeah. What would be an ideal way for Nigeria labor generally to react to issues like this? First and foremost, like I said, agenda. when you're talking about labor, labor are representing the organizations that they work for. And because it is more like before now, you had government was the biggest employer of labor. And that is why it was easy for people to say, yes, you know, labor represents, you know, almost everybody. But that is gradually, you know, fading. The government is no longer the biggest employer of, of labor. Yeah. And so when you have situations like that, what you consistently do, labor should have, you know, um, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, a, a shadow government, kind of, that consistently looks at government policies. The moment government are not seeing a policy, you should have your shadow cabinet that will look into it and give alternative. But a situation where you don't even have alternative to give, and then you, you sit down midway into, into uh, um, mass action, you go sit down with government, and then government tell you, shave this action until we do this. Even the government won't take you seriously. So, All right. Uh, um, so, so you don't believe in the two weeks, the palliatives, you know, that the government has mentioned? Palliative, it, during the lockdown, palliatives were shared. To who? So this, you know, when a government consistently rape you, you know, in the open, and that same government tells you, don't worry, we'll cover you inside. And then you believe, you come to me and tell me, ah, you see, the government has promised that they would, you know, all of this would happen. Palliative to who? 
Now, as we speak now, somebody, the person I said called me yesterday was complaining about this same electricity tariff. Yeah. Uh, the, you increase electric, electricity tariff. If that's been in the often. They've been discussing it from a year ago. I, I wish we had more time. And then, to... and then, sorry, quickly, you did not just increase that. You're also saying that now you will, you have hands off for a subsidy. In 2016, this was the same statement you made. In 2019, you said refineries were going to work. And now you say, we don't even have business in business. The refinery won't work. We have spent money on it. Nobody is held accountable. And then you say, let's sit down for another two weeks. And they'll be palliative. The ones you didn't see during the lockdown, you're expecting that you see you know, them there, there were some resolutions from that committee meeting that I would have loved to pick your brains on. But for, in the interest of time, let's uh, take a look at the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the big one is Game of Wits over Strike. That's what we've been talking about uh, so far. Uh, it has uh, a rider, two actually. Labor may go for deal agree on deregulation, resist electricity tariff hike, banks, airports, seaports to be shot, strike against court order illegal, lawyers insist, uh, please vow to enforce injunction. Uh, that, that strike um, court matter, could you speak on it, that, that injunction? Because there was that injunction before Labour said they were going to go on strike. Uh, you you see, government, like I said, government keep making the same mistake over and over again. If you get injunction against a labor organization, does that amount to an injunction against the ordinary man that was not part of that matter? You know, so when you insist, so we have gotten, court has restrained, you know, labor, but there are issues that must be discussed. What are these issues? The issues are the prevailing hardship. Can court determine all of those? You know, and so government, the Labour also said they got a court order stopping government from disrupting. Yeah. And then government violate that court order. You violate one court order and you want to enforce another one. You know, so these things don't work. And that's why I say consistently give people a sense of belonging. And when we abuse our court processes like this, we pick and choose which one to obey. And then you turn around to say, oh, look, somebody must obey court order. You are directly okay. telling the person not to obey. Mm. Uh, there are some other headlines here we've captured in uh, previous, uh, the Zulu attack. We also have uh, a flawed uh, Raveji, sweeps man in Ondo, Raveji's Kogi, uh, Niger State. Um, uh, we did have a journalist from Kogi talk to us over the weekend um, about the situation there. Flood, I mean, as I speak now, the, the my presentation was pretty is, bad. Is submerging them um, in, in flood. We and seem I, to go over this every year. Yeah, you see, these are some of the prevailing issues. And then recently, somebody said um, the uh, water in Kenji Dam overflow, and uh, so they had to open Kenji Dam. And the moment you do that, you know that, yes, there'll definitely be flood in certain communities. Apart from that, it's a recurrent decima. Even in, you know, America, in some places, you have similar, you know, natural disaster. But you see people take you know, make concerted effort to ensure that, you know, you, you do, there's the, the, it, when it reoccurs, you know, the disaster is minimized by also ensuring that the green areas or the water channels are, 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 are kept free. But what do we do? You have the Meteorological Society once or so, there'll be rain, several months of rain, there'll be flood, you know, clear the, the drainages, and it ends there. Nobody's enforcing all of that. All so, right. and then even the green areas, how much of it are we enforcing? Now we're talking about Ruga, or we're talking about the water resource bill, but nobody's insisting that these green areas must be kept, you know, open. So in the event that there are water channels, water flow, you know, it passes through this area. Otherwise, it will redirect itself. It's something you can't hold. It's a natural right. disaster. We're going to just quickly rush through uh, the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, one of the stories that I feel, you know, we may also speak on is uh, um, Aldo Ogbe, uh, who's uh, saying that the North remains impoverished um, even um, while they've dominated politics um, on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. And then, of course, also reports on the uh, averted uh, strike. The uh, governor of um, Borno State also uh, made the news um, also on... Um... Security on a lot. <laughs> That's the big one there. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, quickly uh, um, get into one of these ones. We can, uh, of course, end uh, off the press with this this morning. Of course, uh, eight suspected court members arrested while mourning departed colleague in Ogun State. Uh, Borneo State Governor's convoy escapes another attack from suspected Boko Haram members. Yeah, um, 
the North remain impoverished, the entire country remain impoverished. And, and so that's why people should um, also understand that um, we are the ones in opposition, not the leaders. You hear Aldo be talking now as he's the leader of opposition. Meanwhile, he's in the ruling party. He was a minister until 2019. You know, in all of this, what did he do to ensure that this area is from the middle bed, you know, the food basket of the nation? Apart from you know being touted as a farmer, what did he do to reduce and alleviate poverty? You know, to, by adding value to farming as a government and a minister, so that to today we will say yes, the people that were we've removed so and so number from from poverty. The not education is the best legacy you can give. You can bequeath to any child, but what is the not doing in terms of educating its people? The answer is no. And so without education, you're consistently going to have this, you know, poor people. And if care is not taken very soon, these poor people will have nobody to eat but the rich. That's all the time we have uh, on uh, Off the Press uh, for now. Of course, uh, remember, uh, the of course, uh, program continues, so don't uh, go anywhere. Thank you very much to Libra Soshoma for stepping in and for okay. speaking with us this morning. Take a short break, and when we come back, uh, more on The Breakfast. Just stay with us.